optimistic about our lives becoming more interesting, have more time to do what we want versus just work. And a lot of people just hate their jobs, just absolutely hate it. And they would love sure. to be able to sit back in <laughs> UBI. But then again, when I look at human nature and look at the whole colonizations of, of the third world and just like, right, you know, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we have what it takes to, to implement a fair UBI and not for some governments to misuse it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. And I think the biggest takeaway that I'll leave here on a good note for everyone listening is to say that this is the prime time of opportunity, meaning that right now, as the paradigm shift's happening, the optimistic outlook is we are in the midst of the paradigm shift due to all of the bad things, the inflation cost, or the, you know, the cost of living, the fact that you, you should not even look at the housing market right now due to how high the interest rates are. Like All this stuff that's compounding should be the actual indicator for everyone to look at, okay, well, if the, all this is happening, that means I'm not the only one in this boat. That means hundreds of thousands of other people or even millions of other people are in some similar situation. How can I ramify this and, and remedy this by being, you know, what, what can I do right now to be able to learn these skill sets? And the good thing is information has never been more accessible. Like you go on YouTube, there's a 12 hour course on Python. You, you look up anything that you want. There's free resources everywhere currently existing from people, content creators that recognize this problem mm. with the goal of hoping to fill that skill gap, Right. But here's the thing, and it goes back to your point. It depends on the person. Humans have to be proactive in essence of knowing that this is what they want for them to do it. You cannot give this one size fits all. Everyone should learn coding. Everyone should do Python because it's not, we're not as black and white, right? It's not as simple as that. Humans are very complex creatures. And this is really where I think the bulk of everything needs to be this is the time to find, okay, I got my information. Maybe I'm li I've listened to a lot of Nikos' podcasts or I've listened to some other podcasts or I've gained some insights here and there. Now, what can I do with that? And this is the opportunity of where you can start to think of getting ahead of the curve before the curve folds. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's been a really fascinating time, Kevin. And I just want to add to that, like we are, everyone's Many people talk about this whole carbon offset, carbon neutral. And I think as we yield this power, we should, as human beings, think, is what I'm doing with this AI going to feed, enclose, and shelter more human beings or less? And based on that decision, we go ahead with that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing initiatives right now, like uh, OpenAI has a whole entire mission statement saying we do AI for good, right? AI for, and this is how Google started. Right. Google started off saying, do no evil. We do everything for good. And that's why I'm saying history often doesn't repeat exactly, but it does often rhyme. And we are seeing almost the same type of effect, almost the same type of effect when the internet was first introduced, because we are introducing a new concept. It's almost like internet number two, where AI ML can exist both as an automation and application. It's only when AI and ML starts to displace full on core necessities that people should be concerned. And a good example of this is, let's say, you know, you have Elon Musk talking about robotics. You have the robotics industry, such as, you know, Boston, for example, their Boston Dynamics, they ultimately have transcended, right? You're seeing all this stuff. When you merge the robotics and you merge the AI, you can obviously start to do some interesting things that reduce physical manual labor and a whole bunch of other stuff. Sure. But the other way of going about this is, in my opinion, to have a nice balance. If there's some sort of regulation or some sort of rules that says that the machine isn't going to full on replace the livelihood of the human, but rather help the human. Almost like how right now we're using cranes we're using all these construction equipment. What if these robots were able to lift much heavier and do all this stuff, right? But they're able to help the actual person that does that job from injuring themselves. That's one way of being able to use ro robotics and AIs as an application, not a replication. Mm -hmm. The other way is, well, why don't we have them support the actual workforce? 
This way, the company may need to hire less, but they're not hurting any livelihoods in the process because this goes back into our cost estimate, right? But it all, but then all of this depends on the actual regulatory states, the current state of the union for how people want to go about things. And then you have the ethics of things as well. So that's very optimistic. And the only thing, another thing that comes to mind though is that I think a lot of our conversation has been based around the Western mindset, the Western ideals, Western morality, whatever you want. But we haven't th thought about really yet what happens if, well, I won't use names here, certain countries without our ethics, they're not thinking about UBI and they're not thinking about like world peace. They're probably looking at how do we use AI and, and, and not just like, you know, hackers or stuff like that, but AI as warfare. I'm sure 100% sure must be people 100%. with warfare AI that would basically connect to the internet and do a lot of damage. We don't, that'd be a good novel, man, <laughs> if someone wants to write about that. I mean, well, again, to your point, like I said, history often doesn't repeat, but it rhymes because the internet was built by, it was DARPAnet. It was by, it was by military, it was by the internet. It was pretty much all specific to, you know, computers and all this was military first. It was supposed to be in this jurisdiction of where it was used for special forces, it was used for tactical operations. It only then became commercialized and introduced for both consumer use and business use, right? And we're seeing the same exact thing with AI and ML. I am 100% sure there's going to be military use. There's going to be tactical government use, but there's obviously going to be commercialization as well. And also uh, consumer use. I'm sure schools are finding ways and they're already talking about finding ways of being able to use AI to help teach students. I think when it passed the bar exam, pretty much the law school said that although chat GPT would make a mediocre law student, it still passed the exam and professors are starting to think about how to use chat GPT and other AI sources to better challenge their students to be able to make them better lawyers. So they're starting to think about this already. They're already starting to think about ways of AI application and ways of how to use AI as a way to enhance and reinforce the actual humans that are attending the classes. Mm.